In this uh, video, we'll discuss C4 cycle. C4 cycle or C4 pathway. This pathway is also known as Hatches Lack cycle. Named after the scientist who gave the complete uh, cycle. Now, this cycle is seen in plants and these plants are called C4 plants because they are showing this kind of cycle. So the example of the plants in which we see this are maize, sorghum, sugarcane, euphorbia, chinopodium, etc. And how have these plants adapted themselves? This is the most interesting thing. The C4 cycle is actually a cycle which has uh, evolved or the plants have uh, undergone adaptation to avoid that photorespiratory loss. In the earlier video, we talked about photorespiration and we saw that the plants which grow in warmer conditions they suffer from the problem of photorespiration and the problem was faced because of this rubisco. Rubisco's behavior changes when the temperature is high and oxygen concentration is high. So if the plants which are all normally growing in warmer condition, unless and until they show some kind of adaptation, they keep suffering from these problems. So they show these adaptations. Let us talk about the adaptations which we see. Adaptations in C4 plants to avoid photorespiration. One adaptation is they show dimorphic chloroplast. Dimorphic chloroplast. We have discussed this earlier in brief. These dimorphic chloroplasts are granule and a granule. Granule chloroplasts are the ones which would have granule. And a granule would not have granite, they would have only stroma lamina. So if we just in short draw the granule ones, a typical chloroplast and all these thylakoids, they would be arranged in the form of stacks which we call grana. And connecting these grana would be the stroma lamina. Whereas in case of a granule, Everything is going to be same, that means double membrane and everything. Only thing is, there would be just stroma laminae, no grana. Now these grana have thylakoids, that means they have the pigments which are responsible for the non-cyclic photophosphorylation. In C4 plants, gran granal chloroplasts are found in the mesophyll cells. That means cells in the mesophyll area, they would have chloroplasts and those chloroplasts would be granule type. A granule chloroplasts are found in the bundle sheath cells. Bundle sheath cells. This is one adaptation and how that adaptation is going to help that we will see in a minute. So this is one. Second important thing, they show Kranz anatomy. C4 plant show Kranz anatomy. Kranz anatomy means the cells of the bundle sheath, they are arranged in a wreath-like manner. So if we draw the epidermal cells, the upper epidermis, which is covered with the cuticle, Lower epidermis, which has stomata, and these are the cells. 
the mesophyll cells of both the types. That means the palisade parenchyma cells and then there would be spongy parenchyma on the lower side. And say here is the vascular bundle. So the vascular tissue that is xylem and phloem is surrounded by special thick walled cells which are called bundle sheath cells. So these are bundle sheath cells or this entire layer is known as the bundle sheath because it is surrounding the vascular bundle. And we said the agranal chloroplasts are found in this and Krenz anatomy means the cells of bundle sheath are arranged in a wreath like manner. They are arranged wreath like. Wreath word is used for any circular arrangement. Normally this term is used for circular floral arrangement. But here also the cells of the bundle sheath, they are arranged in a circular manner and that is called Krenz anatomy. So there are two adaptations which we see in these C4 plants. One, they show dimorphic chloroplast, granal and agranal and second, they show Krenz anatomy. Now what is the ad uh, advantage of these things? Granal chloroplast would be here. That means in the mesophyll cells. So this is the location where there would be granal chloroplast. And in the bundle sheath would be a granal chloroplast. Wherever there is granal chloroplast, that means those thylakoids are present. This is the place where light reaction would take place. And wherever agranal chloroplasts are there, that means predominantly it has stroma. So this is the place where C3 cycle is going to take place. Now let us see what has been achieved by doing this. Light reaction takes place here. This is the upper surface and from here the sunlight is going to fall on the cells. So light reaction takes place here because light is essential. For light reaction to take place, thylakoids are required because this is the place where the pigments are present. So, light reaction takes place. And we also know that oxygen is produced as a result of light reaction or in non-cyclic. That means oxygen will be released here. And C3 cycle, which is rubisco dependent, has been shifted into deeper cells. So by shifting the site of the uh, C3 cycle, what has the plant achieved? Plant has achieved a slightly lower temperature because in the cells of the upper uh, layers, the temperature is going to be a little more because they are on the top side. C3 cycle has been shifted into deeper cells. So in deeper cells, that is in bundle sheet cells, C3 cycle would take place and here the temperature is going to be slightly lower. One problem has been taken care of. Rubisco acts as oxygenase when the temperature is high. So what the C4 plants have done is they have changed the site where this Rubisco acts that is C3 cycle. Instead of mesophyll, now C3 cycle would take place in bundle sheet cells. So these cells are deeper cells. And in deeper cells, temperature is not going to be high. So one problem resolved. Second problem was oxygen concentration. Oxygen is released as a result of non-cyclic photophosphorylation. And that takes place in the thylakoid membrane. So granal chloroplast, where grana are present or thylakoids are present, is in the mesophyll. That means this is the place where oxygen will be released and in the bundle sheet cells, a granal chloroplasts are there. A granal chloroplast would not help in non-cyclic photophosphorylation. That means here oxygen will not be released. So oxygen concentration again is not going to be high in bundle sheet and temperature is going to be lower. So both the problems where Rubisco was acting as 
oxygenase have been taken care of. So by these two adaptations, C4 plants, they have overcome the problem of photorespiration. And after we have understood this, uh, these adaptations, now let us discuss the actual cycle that is the C4 part.